So we learned about the collector current. Let's learn about uh, the base current and the emitter current, right? So for the base current, I know that the base current is actually made of two different components. There is the reverse injection of holes into the emitter. Remember when I said that we have electrons going from emitter to the base, but we have a small flow, well, smaller compared to small compared to that flow of electrons, a small flow of holes going from base to emitter. And we said that the ratio is somewhere between uh, somewhere around 100, right? So like the doping level of emitter is 100 times bigger than bigger than uh, the base. Therefore, the amount of these holes are going to be like almost 1% of the uh, amount of these electrons going from the emitter to the base. Okay. The second uh, component that is basically uh, contributing into the into the uh, base current is the recombination of holes with electrons coming from the emitter. Remember that I said the 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 base is actually pretty thin, and some of these electrons are going from emitter to the base before reaching the collector or the depletion region between base and collector, some of them get recombined. And these some of the, these electrons are actually, the, the, this happens very occasionally. Uh, let's say that every out of every 100, only one of them gets recombined because the base is actually very lightly doped compared to the number of electrons that are coming in from the emitter. And also it's very thin. So uh, only a very small fraction, let's say 1% of them get recombined. Uh, and that should, those holes should, should be provided by the base junction. So the current that is going into the transistor from the base is made of these two small components. So you can imagine that it is much smaller than uh, the current that is actually arriving at the collector. So depending on the structure of your device, how thin is the base, how the, how how are the doping levels, uh, you have you will have a parameter called beta, which is the ratio between this collector current and the base current. As I said, it's like around one percent or something. But beta is generally a number between 50 to 200. It's a number that is always given to you. So whenever I give you a transistor, similar to a resistor, when I give you a resistor, I give you well, the resistance. I say that this is, for example, a 100 ohm resistor. For a transistor, if it's a bipolar transistor, one of the things that I always have to give you provide or provide you is the beta. Okay. So this beta is telling you that, like, what is the ratio between the this big arrow and let's say this small arrow. So there's this current that is going from the base to collector, and this is the other component which I mentioned that is the that is because of the recombination. And just by looking at this picture, you can actually see, you can actually guess the emitter current. You can see that the emitter current, the current is going from here, or maybe like this is the flow of electrons, so the current is coming out of the emitter junction or emitter terminal is going to be the addition of the base current and the collector current. And also, well, another way of saying this is that we have KCL, right? So imagine this whole thing as a super node. Remember electrical circuits? So if this is the collector current, this is the emitter current, and this is the base current, the collector current plus the base current has to be equal to emitter current. Right. So since collector current is beta times base current, you can say that this is beta IB plus IB is equal to IE. So in a sense, you can say that IE is equal to beta plus one times IB. Or you could say IE is beta over, sorry, beta plus one over beta times IC. So you can see that IC and IE are pretty big. And it's obvious from this this picture, right? But IB is always a small. So let's say that if, if beta is 100 and your IB is, um, I don't know, 10 microamp, and beta is 100, then you can know that your collector current is going to be 1 milliamp or 1,000 microamps, and your emitter current is going to be basically 1,010 microamps. So this tells you that IC and IE are pretty much equal to each other. Since beta is actually a pretty big number, you can actually see it from here as well, right? So beta plus 1 over beta is like 100 when 1 over 100 times IC. But at the end of the day, IE is always greater than, IE is always the greater than the other two, and it's the addition of the collector and the base current. So the last slide is just a summary of all these currents. So IC is this 
exponential equation that I mentioned, IB, the base current is one over beta, so like let's say 1% of that, IE is the addition of the two, so it's going to be beta plus one over beta times IC, and sometimes other, like basically instead of giving you the beta, in some cases alpha is given, and alpha is defined as this. So alpha and beta are basically interchangeable, so you, once you have one of them, you have the other one. So al you can see that alpha is a number that is smaller than one, but it's pretty close to one. So like, for example, it's 100 over 101, or 50 over 51, or 200 over 201, okay? I hope everything was clear. See you next week.